So let's check out here the C3 Nano headquarters here in the Silicon Valley. I'm uh, Shri Peruvemba. I'm uh, here at uh, C3 Nano's uh, headquarters here in Silicon Valley. Uh, this is Dr. Ajay Virkar, the co-founder for uh, C3 Nano. Thank you so much, Ajay, for uh, talking about the technology and about the company and so on and so forth. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thanks, Shri. Thanks for inviting me to give a little more information about C3 Nano. Uh, so my name is, yeah, as you mentioned, Ajay Virkar. Um, C3 Nano spun out as a startup from some of the graduate work that uh, I did at Stanford in Professor Jen and Bao's group. Um, there the focus was really looking at new electronic materials for a variety of applications. That's really her expertise. And, um, so during the course of some of the work, we came up with some new ideas. And so Professor Bao, I, and another um, postdoctoral fellow founded C3Nano when we found some very new applica interesting applications and new materials that we thought we could use um, to attack you know, several of the problems related to transparent conductive films and those, you know, the applications they serve. Mm. Well, the transparent conductors are obviously um, a hot subject today. Uh, particularly as it regards uh, touch screens so on and so forth. Um, but uh, of all the different things you could do with the core technology, why did you pick uh, transparent conductors? Why silver nanowire and uh, the active grid product uh, that, you, that you currently make? Yeah, that's a great question. So actually when the company first started, we, um, we really were focused more on solar applications. So this yeah. was around 2010, 2011. That's when one, solar was very hot. Yeah. Some of the original rounds of financing that we got were also directed at, you know, could these materials use, be used in solar applications? And in fact, we already had made some prototypes and showed quite good performances. Um, but it just turns out that we got a lot more interest in actually using these materials for the display applications. And so that's where we started looking at what's the best application. And touch sensors just seemed to be the place where they really wanted a new transparent conductive material. There was problems with the incumbent technology. Um, and the future would have to require materials like ours. And so looking at all the various types of nanomaterial building blocks we could work with, um, we started actually originally looking really most closely at carbon nanotubes. Mm -hmm. And at Stanford, we developed a technology where we were able to dramatically reduce the resistance of those carbon nanotubes by doing various types of surface chemistries and other modifications. So we took kind of what we learned in some sense there. Of course, we had a completely change, philosophically similar idea. How do we make a really high-performing transparent conductive material? Um, but instead of going from carbon nanotubes, we switched to silver nanowires mm -hmm. um, because of their inherent, improve, inherent connectivity improvements over, let's say, a carbon nanotube as a building block. Um, and looking more at the applications we were targeting it, as we started getting more and more customer feedback, we just sort of realized that we'd have to find um, not only use silver nanowires, but we'd have to even improve beyond what is a traditional silver nanowire base, let's say, or silver nanowire transparent conductor. Um, and so we came up with this um, idea, which we call nano glue, and that's kind of the key technology that the company's really founded on. And there the idea is, instead of having a transparent conductive film composed of, let's say, a billion interconnecting silver nanowires, where there's simply inherent junction resistance between neighboring or adjacent nanowires, um, Instead of doing that, we actually wanted to create some materials, add some materials which actually create a completely fused structure. Mm -hmm. And by doing this kind of chemical fusing, we take you know what looks like a, an ink, which is very neat. It has this is composed of billions and billions of silver nanowires. Yeah. When it coats into a very thin film, actually there's gaps between these nanowires that allow a lot of light through. Yeah. And we add a special chemical, this nano glue that we call, that actually fuses all these chemical wires into a singular grid. Yeah. So we get very high conductivities by using minimal amounts of the me metallic mm -hmm. nanowires in this yeah. material. And you picked silver because silver is the best conductor on the planet. Silver is the best conductor on the planet. Um, there was a lot of, you know, dating back to the early 1990s, there's been academic work on how to synthesize these types of nanowires. Yeah. Um, and so there was, we thought the best material to start with. So we actually explored multiple nanowire options initially, but really decided silver was the most mature technology and the ones where we were able to figure out how to use our nano glue in the most um, efficient way. Mm -hmm. Well, m there are going to be folks that uh, may not be as familiar with silver nanowire sure. technology. Uh, so uh, could you explain how you get started with what, uh, you know, where do you start? How do you build sure. these nanowires? And then what is the product that's a final uh, product that comes out of C3 Nano that goes into the market? Sounds, that's a good question. Um, so yeah, silver nanowire, as the name sort of suggests, is a really long filament of fiber. So where the aspect ratio is several thousand. Um, and so these materials are made, as I kind of mentioned, the technology was really developed in the early 1990s mm -hmm. uh, by a French group. And they're the first that noticed that using the chemistry that's known as a polyol chemistry, where you basically use silver metallic salts with specific types of polymers. Um, you can actually create, these salts will then basically dissolve so you'll get silver ions in the solution. Um, these polymers and various other additives will actually direct the growth to make a solid silver filament. It's very, very fine, well, maybe tens of nanometers in diameter yeah. and tens of microns in length. So you get this very interesting, very so like long. like a thousand to one aspect yeah, ratio kind of product. Huge ratio, like a big yeah. rope or a big spaghetti of, of <laughs> silver, yeah. but nanoscale. Um, 
And so using this as kind of the basic building block, several other researchers, first in academia and then multiple other companies, were looking at how to use these materials and mostly for transparent conducting mm -hmm. applications. Mm -hmm. um, so you make the ink, mm -hmm. and the ink is then uh, coated on film. That's right. This would be roll-to-roll -roll coating? Exactly. So one of the big advantages of these types of materials for transparent conductor applications is you have, because all transparent, or nearly all transparent conductor applications really require huge amounts of material. Yeah. Um, because transparent conductors, you know, they go everywhere. They're in every single display you see. They're in every single solar cell you see. So they're, I mean, they're, you know, talking about millions of meters squared of material. Yeah. So they have to be something that can be processed quickly and efficiently. And so roll-to-roll -roll is one of the big advantages of inks like ours that can be coated and deposited at low temperatures. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's right. So most of our customers and partners are really called coating companies. So these are companies that do um, high throughput, uh, high speed roll to roll coating on plastics. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess maybe to mention one of our. Um, I'm going to switch back to the technology okay. aspect of it. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, both uh, the Active Grade as well as about Nano Glue. You okay. had mentioned the uh, two product names. Sure. Tell us a little bit more about each of them. Absolutely. So. Let's just go a little bit to one of the major, um, as I, we kind of mentioned before, when you use, for example, silver nanowires, you do have a lot of nice attributes with these materials, and that's why there's, there were you know, other competitive, um, other competitors looking at using silver nanowires, other metallic nanowires, and the reason, as you mentioned before, silver is a great conductor. If you make it nanoscale, you get you know good optical properties. It's inherently a very flexible material, um, as we'll kind of talk about later. Flexibility is one of the key things that the incumbent material lacks. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, one of the issues that- By income and you're, you're referring to ITO. ITO, I should mention the ITO, which is a dope metal axide, really a ceramic material. So these ceramic materials and ITO is a great transparent conductor in many ways, very good optical performances. Um, but at the same point, getting very low resistances is, is challenging. Mm -hmm. And that's why, let me, you know, taking a step back, that's really one of the major drivers where people were looking for originally new, new transparent conductors was the things that outperform um, uh, ITO. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, of all the of all the materials that were out there, um, silver nanowires were one very good material. Uh, but the Achilles heel for these kinds of um, materials has been basically the optical property. So mm. when you finally get to low resistances, the material starts looking very hazy, yeah. um, or, or kind of whitish or milky. And these were all problems, especially when you're targeting very large volume applications, like for example, consumer electronics, smartphones, tablets. They're very very picky on what the final optical properties, yeah, especially. Yeah. You know, the, and the higher you go in tier, means the larger the volumes, means the more picky the spec. <laughs> yeah. um, and so we just we were able to. So in some sense, what you're uh, describing to me is when I first got introduced um, to transparent conductors, um, I was told, uh, you know, you're trying to market something that is invisible. Right. So if you can see your product, that means it's not working. E exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, and it's always a challenge to uh, uh, to show a product that is supposed to be invisible. Exactly. Uh, yet it has some tremendous uh, attributes to it that uh, that makes it uh, suitable for all these consumer uh, applications. Exactly. You want it to be as um, yeah, as transparent as possible. Exactly. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is um, uh, talk to you a little bit about um, you know uh, the nano glue uh, product. Sure. And uh, uh, if you can uh, depict how it works, sure. and um, what makes it unique, and why why is it important? Sure, we can maybe load up a. We have one kind of video that explains that. I can explain on this you know, this slide here for a moment, and then yeah. we can maybe show a video. Yeah, yeah of course. So, so basically, if you look at a traditional or a typical transparent conductive film composed of nanowires. This is the kind of structure you have, and here what we de depicted is the electron jumping from wire to wire. Okay. And you get this very classic percolative behavior in terms of how the electrons move. Yeah. Um, now, instead, what we did is we add this special chemical, which we call nano glue. Yeah. And this material um, actually chemically fuses the nanowires together. Yeah. So as opposed to having a plurality, a bunch of different nano independent nanowires, we have this completely new structure, which we call active grid, which is enabled by this nano glue, just really this chemical glue that basically fuses all the wires into a completely different structure. Uh. And now by doing so, the big advantage is to get, you can get even lower resistances by using less silver. And by using less total silver, of course, the optical properties get better and better. Of course. And so that has been the way that we've attracted, you know, especially the tier one partners like Nisha Hitachi Chemical has been the fact our optics have been able to be much better than our competitors. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really based on the fact that we, we had this very unique technology and a completely different material. So yeah. in fact, we've talked with some you know experts in the field, some of the physicists that were the first to even develop this kind of technology. And they said, oh, clearly it's a very different material we can prove based on the way the electricity flows. So it's a very nice you know, new material that we really, really distinguish itself from what's been done in the past with just purely nanowire transparent conductors. So uh, can this material be used just on PET type film based substrates or can you also apply it to other types of substrates? Oh, that's a great question. So yeah, actually we have, yeah, here's an example. So this I believe is coated on, on COP. <laughs> on COP, okay. 
So COP is, may not be as uh, familiar to everybody, for example, as PET, but COP is a cyclic olefin. It is basically has the optical properties of any plastic that are really closest to glass. And glass is kind of, of course, the gold standard, the holy grail. And so the nice thing is, yes, this ink can be coated onto basically any sort of substrate, any plastic substrate. It can be coated onto polycarbonates, onto PETs, onto COPs, onto COCs, um, you name it, essentially, um, of course, onto glass itself. Um, and the other really interesting and unique thing about this technology, and, and this is, you know, these transparent conductive inks in, in general, is um, you can also try to design them to have very low um, processing. Mm -hmm -hmm. And that's a big, huge advantage over things like ITO mm. as well. So ITO being an indium tin oxide, it's a sputtered, you know, metal, doped metal oxide. Yep. Requires high temperature to get reasonable conductivities. Yep. These we can cure at less than, let's say, 80 degrees. Wow. Which means you're below the TG of a lot of polymers or plastic substrates. Yep. So you can get 50 ohms, 30 ohms per square, 20 ohms per square, whatever you want, yeah. um, at you know 80, de 80 degrees, which means that you can coat onto almost any substrate within a total device. Yeah. And the big and advantage does it also mean that you can um, uh, you know pattern uh, uh, the uh, nanowires using different te uh, techniques because it, it's l low temperature. Yeah, exactly. So it enables many different things. So you know, for example, the nanowires can be patterned using traditional methods like photolithography and also yep. laser patterning. Yeah. And we're exploring, you know, other new novel technologies that um, we're trying to work with some partners on. Are there other ways we can, you know, using some of the unique solution processability of these materials, low temperature, can we enable completely novel patterning methods? We're looking into those as well. Ajay, there are a number of um, technologies uh, that have um, come into play recently um, that are all trying to make uh, transparent conductors of different kinds, right? Um, and each have their own attributes. Can you tell us a little bit about these technologies as well as how you compare? That's a, that's a really good question. So yeah, as you know, we've been talking about, there's so many applications that require transparent conductors, and so there's going to be, of course, pluses and minuses for all of them, and people, of course, such a competitive space because there's you know, potentially such a large market. Um, so this is a really nice you know, slide that ID Tech X has put together, which and it's a little bit old, but still, I think, conceptually, is very similar to what I think the industry sees still as where these various different non-ITO players are. Um, so what this graph is basically showing on, on the y-axis is the shoot resistance. So of yep. course you want this to be as low as possible to be able to hit as many possible target applications. Yep. And on the x-axis is transmission. Of course you want this to be as high as possible, which means again the film looks optically as, as good as possible. Yeah. Um, so basically we want you, your holy grail is right here. Exactly, yeah. exactly, <laughs> about yeah. right here, exactly. Yeah. Um, and of course there's multiple other optical properties outside of just transmission, the hazes we talked about, color, other things, but this mm -hmm. is a good start. Um, so carbon nanotubes are one of the technologies that have been thought about for a long time. Yeah. Um, the problem with carbon nanotubes for uh, mostly applications to really capture um, the, these kind of large market applications is still the optical properties are really not good enough, not mm. good as ITO. Mm. Um, that is also really the same true of other organic or carbon-based solutions like PDOT, for example. So great applications for PDOT, but in this kind of consumer electronics, touch sensor space, display space, really not the material that's being used because mm. it kind of underperforms versus ITO, so not a huge drive to switch. Sure. Um, so really the two technologies that really are Clearly, the dominant or preeminent solutions for ITO are going to be metal mesh based yep. um, and silver nanowires. Whether that's yep. silver nanowire based or really, and our we believe is the best technology solution because we kind of combine the properties of both metal mesh mm -hmm. and also silver nanowire. We mm -hmm. try to kind of take the good attributes of both of them. Yeah. Um, so still, metal mesh is applications where it's you know done quite well, and there's a, there's a lot of things you can buy even now. You can go to a store and buy products that you're using metal mesh. Yeah. Um, but isn't one of the challenges of metal mesh uh, that it has more a exactly. and uh, the, the pattern is visible in certain applications and so on? Exactly. So as, as the device gets go more intimate with the device, it becomes yeah. really, a, let's say, a touch, uh, you know, a, a handheld device or let's say a tablet. There, there are problems with metal mesh. It still has not overcome things like more as you mentioned, optical starburst, other effects. Where there, really, people are looking to silver nanowire based solutions as the best, you know, total solution. And uh, the optical properties that we're able to achieve are, we think, the first real material that can come in and really replace ITO, especially at the high end. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with silver nanowire, one of the criticisms is uh, haze. Um, and uh, uh, what kind of performance have you been able to achieve um, compared to maybe other technologies? Yeah, that's right. So it's, you know, we, we've, been, of course, been tracking what's been done by others. But um, recently, we were able to demonstrate, and, and many customers have validated, that at 50 ohms per square right now, just a transparent conductive layer is around 0.2 haze, mm -hmm. which is just remarkably that's low. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, even much lower than ITO. Um, so that's really great. And we think, you know, um, it's just traditional silver nanowire based technologies, and of course, there's various different competitive technologies in, within that space. But at 50 ohms per square, are still, you know, significantly worse than that. Probably at least double, triple, quadruple that yeah. type of. Type You've of taken effect. away one of the biggest objections. We believe so. Just really, we think getting 
people very excited, especially the high-end, you know, large high-end customers. At the moment, you know, the the kind of the initially when the a few years ago that the target was always can you get to let's say 50 ohms per square, yeah. um, which is much better than ITO can do on plastics, yeah. uh, and have the haze let's say one percent, which is basically what ITO was at. Um, but you know, the, just being different materials, even though the, the optical properties might match ITO in terms of, let's say, haze, actually there's just the materials being different, they have also different optical behavior. Mm -hmm. And so there's just been a push, the industry's always pushed for lower and lower and lower haze, mm -hmm. um, while keeping the resistance, of course, also as low as possible. Yeah. And so that's what we've been doing, and there's really a couple different, from a technology perspective, there's really a three, couple different knobs you have. One is um, the, the nano glue technology itself, so optimizing that technology, so getting this chemical fusing based um, uh, you know, this chemical fusing to work uh, better and better, and now we've kind of optimized this process and we've proven this. Um, the other is also looking at, for example, the geometry of the silver nanowire itself. So we kind of historically, if we looked at our development from 2014, um, we were at about 50 ohms per square. The haze for just the film was about 0.7, which at the point was also industry leading, it was very low. Yeah. Um, this is what it attracted some of the original, uh, um, you know, engagement with the, the premier tier one type customers and yeah. partners. Um, and since then, we've kind of steadily marched this haze number lower and lower and lower, yep. and maintained you know 50 ohms per square. So um, at the end of last, around the end of last year, we were, you know, have demonstrated and showed multiple customers and companies like HCC and also showed this. We could get you know 50 ohms per square at 0.3 haze, which is wow. remarkably low. This yep. was much better than anybody had ever seen before. Yep. Um, and so we were. Um, you know, looking at some major projects with some very large end customers, um, but still that was there was the company was improve more, and so now we are um, at 2016. We've just released our newest product, which is showing 0.2 percent haze at 50 ohms per square, which oh. is an, uh, quite remarkable in terms of the optical properties. In terms of the, the haze number is very very low, so even yeah. lower than something like an ITO. Yeah. Um, and so now we really believe that we are you know, nearly indistinguishable from ITO, which is what so we really need to do for the highest end applications. Mm. So, uh, so technically what you're saying is, if I take two samples, one ITO, another one with the active grid material, and I I if I didn't know which was which, you could probably fool somebody into thinking that um, the ITO is actually your material or vice versa. Th that's exactly what, yeah, that's been always the objective. And we're getting to that stage now where we do, we put samples in front of rooms of people. We travel yeah. to Asia all over the place. People travel here. You, we'll have 20 samples out and people are trying to organize which one's which. And now it's getting very difficult for the naked eye to tell which was which is ITO and which is silver. Yeah. And just a, f you know, a year ago, that was fairly obvious. You could just quickly pick up which one, I mean, much more obvious. And yeah. of course, there are people that are really experienced and trained in the art that are better than others. But in general, it's getting very, very difficult to tell. And so. Yeah. And really, the final device structure really depends on the final stacks. But I think we're getting very confident that um, that we can meet essentially anybody's optical spec. You know, save maybe the just the, the highest, highest possible applications, or the, depending on the exact stack. But it's getting to be nearly indistinguishable from ITO. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'd like to do now is, if possible, we look at some demos. Certainly After that, I want to uh, wind up by asking you a few questions about the future and so on and so forth. That sounds great. So, so would you mind introducing yeah. your team? And so these are two of my colleagues. So this is uh, Andrew Moon, who's our product manager. And he's going to go through some several demos. And um, this is my other colleague, uh, Yadong Kao. Uh, Yadong is an application engineer who started first in the R&D group and now has been traveling more to support customer activity globally. Very nice. So um, gonna who's going to do the first demo? Gonna, uh, Andrew's going to go through several of our products. Andrew, let's start right, with... Nice to uh, meet you, uh, guys. So let me introduce our product demo. So as uh, our CTO, Jay, explained, our technology is uh, uh, active grid technology. Um, it's a silver nanowire based. And uh, so silver nanowires, million of nanowires on the film, but we cannot see because those are nano um, scale uh, materials. Uh, nice thing about this demo is, uh, as you know, uh, conventional technology ITO, it cannot bend. If you like a uh, bend like this, basically material cracks. But our material has a superior flexibility, so you can bend uh, basically um, like hundred of hundred million times, but still material has uh, electrical and nice uh, optical properties. Basically, this uh, application can be used for next generation smartphone, flexible smartphone, and tablet. So this is a smartphone uh, demo. As you can see, uh, there is a little bit bigger size, 10.3 um, you know, inch. Uh, it could be a tablet application, still flexible, and uh, nice optical and electrical properties. 
not only smartphone and tablet, of course, uh, we more and more uh, see a wearable technology. So a wearable technology, uh, you know, the, uh, these device should be uh, uh, flexible and, and, and bendable. So we showed a nice uh, touch sensor demo that can be uh, flexible and, and bendable. And one, another thing that I want to uh, mention is that, um, so we have a couple of different product line. Uh, here, what I want to describe is, uh, so for coverance, we use a plastic-based uh, coverance material. It's called Active Guard hard coat uh, product. So the good thing is, uh, people think uh, actually glass has the, uh, the best uh, hardness properties. But if you see uh, scratch resistance of, uh, from our lab data, Active Guard hard coat has a better scratch resistance than glass. Uh, and nice, nice thing about uh, this technology is glass, of course, it cannot bend, but our active guard hard coat uh, coverance also uh, bendable. So with active guard hard coat as well as active grid film, we can make a uh, touch sensor, a uh, flexible touch sensor application. Andrew, is it also lighter than uh, uh doing this on yes, glass? Yes, of course, yeah, significantly, significantly uh, lighter, lighter. Than, than glass. That will enable your mobile devices to be lighter overall, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, my colleague, Yadon Ka, will show actually a large size touch sensor demo. Very well. good, excellent. Let's pass on the microphone and... Uh, So go ahead first, describe what is this device, and then if you could kind sure. of explain the technology. Sure, uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, just showing you, is uh, this is a 55-inch. Uh, you can think about this as a big iPad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically, so you can use this uh, 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 to draw, to write. Yeah. And uh, let me show you something very quick. So that's my hand going, five wow. points. Wow. And then, yeah, you can try it. It's a uh, very smooth and big iPad work, and then uh, we have. Uh, Seems to be very responsive. It's a uh, yeah, it's response very quickly, and also it's multi-touch, and uh, uh, so basically you can write anything on this, and then uh, for example write uh, notes and send to your email, and. So with these types of uh, screens that are that large, yes. um, the key attributes is uh, you know very high conductivity. Yes. And obviously. Uh, you know, very good transmission, isn't it? Yes. And um, this is uh, one of the areas where I presume the active guard, um, uh, the active grid technology exactly. is technology. Uh, exactly, uh, totally right. Uh, yeah. Compared to ITO, our material able yeah. to reach very low sheet resistance, yeah. which enable that to make a large screen like 55 inch, 65, or even bigger. Yeah. Uh, so. And this is the actual material. This, this is actually the sensor. Um, <laughs> That's pretty th cool. There's a liner, so there's some bubbles, of but uh, it's actually this uh, this big uh, iPad yeah, <laughs> or yeah. TV is actually made of this uh, touch sensor. So this entire thing yes. is quite light. It's very light. So I if this were glass, I it would be quite heavy, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So then it not only will it increase the thickness of the uh, entire device, but also you have to make much uh, uh, you know, tougher uh, stand so that it doesn't topple over. Exactly. Right, because of the weight. Uh -huh. Also, uh, this uh, light uh, weight will be easier for shaping, handling, all those things. So, and, uh, so compared to glass, there's a lot of ad advantages. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So, so, yeah, you can make much sleeker designs as well. Yes. Um, because of this. And then I also notice I'm very close here mm -hmm. uh, to the device. I still don't see any patterning or any uh, optical effects. So, uh, uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, you know exactly. uh, that aspect of the design. So basically, as uh, Jay just uh, mentioned before, that uh, our material one of the key advantages we have the nano glue, which make the haze very very low. Yeah, yeah. So this uh, uh, the reason that you don't see the pattern 
and that's because the 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 haze and reflective haze is very very low, yeah, so yeah. that you don't see any anything that uh, on the on the TV. Yeah. And uh, uh, for for larger size, uh, it's actually normally people won't see it very uh, from uh, like a, a distance. Yeah. But uh, even at <laughs> like this distance, yeah. as where you stand, yeah. it's hard to dis uh, to see the pattern. Yeah, of course, because yeah. with these devices, obviously, you're going to touch, so you uh, uh, you know you're going to be fairly close. So let's talk about an application yeah. where um, uh, the speed of response, yeah. uh, because the silver nanowire is a, a very highly conductive material, you get very fast response. Yes. Um, and so can you please uh, demo it sure. so you know, it translates into the benefits yeah. of yeah. technology? This, uh, this, this, this is a game called uh, Flute Ninja, actually a very good demo for showing <laughs> the response. Yeah. So we can start <laughs> just one game. Yeah. Like uh, you if you play with, with uh, on iPad before, so it's basically like you cut the flute where it's popped up. Yeah. And, uh, this showing like uh, how fast you can do it. Yeah. And uh, uh, we can kind of like uh, doing like a trick that yeah. uh, Actually, because it's ten finger touch, yeah. actually you can <laughs> use both hands yeah, yeah. to to yeah. cut the flute. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, essentially, it's a large surface. Yes. Um, so that's why uh, silver nanowire is uh, uh, useful. The active grid technology, mm -hmm. um, and then y you obviously have that fast motion that you need so that you can. Okay. So uh, <laughs> whatever I did, it's game over. <laughs> A big piece of the, this next round of financing, our next strategic plan, is to really expand in, in Asia. So we have the manufacturing facility. We're trying to make a much larger facility to really support um, the activities that are going to be, uh, you know, these kind of consumer electronic applications. And, the, and the, really the heart of that activity is really in Asia. So we need to have a stronger presence there. So we'll continue to do R and D here, and, and then really move to um, manufacturing at large scales in Asia. In Asia, uh -huh. um, your customers, I presume, are already in Asia. Many of them are, yes, exactly. A lot of our key customers are in Asia. And then, um, uh, you know, but the products are, uh, will be used globally. Globally, yeah? exactly. So these are the same things as you mentioned, end up in your, in your phone or um, yeah, on yeah, your desk. All of these different devices. Um, and there's a bunch of other applications, you know, that we're doing. So the future, we think, is really bright. So as you mentioned, yeah. the company started really focusing on solar. And we actually still have activities with solar cell companies. Solar, yeah. We are still trying to promote our film materials, and we still have some applications, especially in some of the thin film, organic photovoltaic. Yeah. Um, and there, the advantage is it's because it's thinner. Flexibility. Uh, flexibility is a big deal. Resistance yeah. as yeah. well. So, so a solar cell no longer has to remain on the top of the roof. They could potentially wrap around a pillar, maybe, or backpack. Exactly. As well. It'll enable those kind of applications. Exactly. So we're looking at those opportunities. We're looking also, of course, at various other things. Um, as, as Andrew mentioned, you know, some of the things outside of the the touch sensor, but the flexible displays, those kind of things. We're looking at a lot of other opportunities where we can combine this low processing temperature to combine multiple layers. So imagine taking a, you know, an optical, there's so many optical films in, let's say, your cell phone, but so many of them are really temperature, they have temperature constraints. Of course. And so you have to add another layer of, let's say, IT over here. You can coat the material directly on top. So yeah. there's a huge cost advantage. There's a huge, you know, conductivity advantage, um, processing advantage. We're also looking at things like solid state lighting. Um, we're looking at a lot of other like things in the wearable, smart windows. Um, and in fact, one of the very interesting things that we're working on that we cannot talk about because it's kind of super secret is we're actually using these in, in some biotech applications. And in fact, we have partnered with um, a very well-known company, and they've already actually started some clinical trials which are using our material um, in their final device. They've already been in patients, and things are going quite well there. And it's a very exciting, completely new application, but there's a whole bunch of different things we think we can do with these kinds of materials. Yeah. And beyond, um, you know, those medical applications always give you certain somewhat a joy because it's not just you're building consumer right. devices, it's but you're doing something good. that will <laughs> really, uh, you know, impact people. That's right. But I presume automotive will also be an application that will be uh, pretty interesting. Certainly. And especially the, um, so not only just, of course, things getting to be much more touch and display -y inside inside automobiles, um, but a lot of these smart cars and, and driverless cars, they need sensors essentially everywhere. Yeah. And those sensors need transparent conductive materials. They need transparent uh, materials that are very hard. They need transparent heating materials. And so those are all applications also that we have you know, some level of engagement. And we're hoping yeah. that some of those will start to mature as that technology also matures, as the adjacent materials and adjacent enabling technologies all mature at the same time. Yeah, particularly with uh, um, uh, automotive getting so much attention these days, I have a car with a very large display, but it's still rectangular. Yeah. Uh, it'd be nice if they're shaped, uh, uh, you know, sort of conform to the dash and yeah. so on. That's yeah. exactly, and that's a place where people are looking for exactly using these types of materials. And we actually do have some partnerships. One of our other investors that's actually, you just can't disclose that is, that's one of their primary applications is also to make things into curved and, and things like that you just can't do with incumbent or traditional yeah. monoxide semi, uh, transparent conductors.
That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank I hope so much. to see uh, C3 Nano products everywhere right. uh, in the <laughs> future. Too. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the demo. Thank you. Thank you.